Hey guys, welcome to Tutes Online. Today we'll be talking about Kirchhoff's laws and its applications in circuit analysis. So there's two laws we're going to talk about. The first is Kirchhoff's current law, also known as KCL, and there's also Kirchhoff's voltage law. known as KVL. So the first one we'll talk about is the current law. KCL says that the sum of all currents at a node will equal zero. So in a circuit if you have some cables coming into a point and they're all connected we'll label them current 1 which is going in that way, current 2 which is going in that way, and current 3, which is leaving that point. We can say the sum of these currents at this node here, node or junction, would be equal to 0. So if, say, this was 1 amp, this one would be 2 amps, and say this is 3 amps. At this node, the current would be the 1 amp from I1 plus the 2 amps from I2, then minus 3 amps from I3. And it's minus because the current is leaving the node, whereas for these ones the current is entering the node. So the summation of these is 0. So say for this example we had another cable. So at this node there was another cable going down. And we'll change these values. So this one's 5 amps, this one's 4 amps, and this one's 7 amps. But we didn't know what I4 is. We know that the summation of I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 equals 0. So 5 plus 4 minus 7 plus whatever I4 is would be equal to zero. You can see that this is just simple algebra and we can rearrange to find that I4 is equal to minus two. So what that means is that I4 must be having a current leaving the node and it's two amps. So for KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, the summation of the voltages for a loop in a circuit is equal to zero. So if we had a circuit with these three resistors and there's a 12 volt battery which we'll call our voltage source, voltage drop on this resistor is 2 volts, voltage drop on this one is 4 volts and we don't know the voltage drop on this one. Because it's a voltage drop we can call it a minus value. So in this loop we know that the summation of voltages would be equal to zero. So the summation of Vs plus V1 plus V2 plus V3 equals zero. So 12 volts minus 2 volts minus 4 volts plus whatever our V3 is would be equal to zero. So rearranging this, we can simply find that V3 is equal to minus 6 volts. So you can see that the sign of the voltage indicates the direction of the potential difference. So the voltage source is adding volts to the circuit, but the resistors are removing volts. But you could swap that and it would still make sense. So we'll look at a slightly harder example. If we had a circuit, we'll put a 9 volt battery in it, resistor, another resistor, another resistor. You can see that we've got two loops now. So that's 9 volts. This is some unknown value of R. This is a 4 ohm resistor. And this is a 1 ohm resistor. And we're also given that the voltage drop across this resistor is 6 volts. Before we start solving, we can label the currents. So we'll say that there's a current going this way, across this resistor, and we'll call that I1. 
of course, or a current going across this resistor, I2, and a current going across this one, I3. So the current goes across here and then splits between these two resistors. So using KVL on the first loop, the current through the 9 volt source will be defined as going from negative to positive. So the loop is going this way, from the negative side to the positive side. So when you're defining it like this, you're saying that the difference, the potential difference, is from 0 volts to 9 volts. So the voltage would be negative 9 volts. Similarly for the resistors, we'll be going from the positive to the negative. And that's because this is the higher potential side from the battery. So this one's a positive, it's negative, it's a positive, that's a negative. So KVL on the first loop would get minus 9 volts in the first one. From this resistor, we would have R times by I1. So that's just V equals IR. Then for this resistor, we have plus the voltage drop, which we're given. So that's 6 volts. And this sum must be equal to 0. Looking at the next loop, we'll define the current as going this way. So for the 4 ohm resistor, we can see we're going from the negative to the positive, which is different to what we're doing here which is positive to negative. So we have minus 6 volts this time from the voltage drop across this resistor plus I3, this one, times by its resistance, which is 1 ohm. On our first equation we have two unknowns, so we can't solve that, but on the second one we only have one unknown. So this one's equal to 0, therefore I3, if we rearrange it, we'll find is equal to 6 amps. So that's our two loops analyzed using KVL. But we can also do KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. So we'll call this node right here, node A. At node A, we have the current going in, I1, and then we have two leaving. So that's minus I2 minus I3 and these equal to zero. Now we know this one here because we just worked it out down here. So we know this must be minus six amps for this one. And we can also figure out I2, and that's just using Ohm's law here. So V equals IR. Our voltage drop is six. Our current is unknown. And our resistance is four ohms. So rearranging that, we'll get I2 is equal to 3 over 2 amps. So this one's minus 3 over 2, and I1. So now using this, we can rearrange to solve and find that I1 is equal to 7.5 amps. So now we know I1, we can put it into this first equation here. So minus 9 plus R times by 7.5 amps plus 6 is equal to 0. So rearranging all that would get R equals 3 over 7.5, which is equal to 0 0.4 ohms. And so we found our R value. So that's how we use Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws to analyze a circuit. If you have any questions, post a comment. Please subscribe and visit the website. Thanks.